Hey, I, uh, I'm Sam Butler, sports editor at the Auburn Plainsman, joined by assistant sports editor Evan McCullers. We're here at the Georgia Dome right after Auburn beat Louisville 31-24. to Evan, what do you think about the game? Uh, I mean, it was fairly high scoring. I think most people expected that. Uh, definitely some offensive miscues by Auburn today, mainly from Jeremy Johnson. I don't think anyone really expected that right out of the gate. There were a lot of high expectations for him. He didn't really live up to the hype today. Uh, obviously, no. we're just beginning, but um, one guy that did really emerge, though, was Peyton Barber. He had a great game. Yep. I think uh, he may have really set himself apart in that running back competition. Yeah, uh, Rock Thomas, he was a starter. He came out, he got injured. Javon Robinson came in after him for a few carries. He got injured. Peyton Barber was third on the depth chart. But he stepped up today, ran for over 100 yards on 20-some-odd carries, and really salted the game away on the last drive. Like you said, uh, yeah, Jeremy struggled a bit. He uh, threw three picks that were, honestly, they were just terrible throws. They weren't, like, good yeah, at all. Decisions. They were terrible decisions, bad throws. Nothing was good right there. And, but he did have one 50-yard touchdown. They got wiped out by a holding call that would have made it 31 to three, and it would have never been this close. It's, they could have won by 40 if they, they kept that. But uh, positives, what basically won, Auburn won the game with was their defense. That really showed out today. Yeah, it really did. Uh, I think there were also a lot of high expectations for the defense in Will Muschamp's debut, and they certainly lived up to the hype. You know, you had that late touchdown that got Louisville's score total to 24, but really the the Tiger defense gave up 17 points in normal play, right. if you will. And so I don't think you could really ask for anything more than that in the opening game. Of course, there's some things that need to be cleaned up, but a forced couple of turnovers and, and overall not many big plays. Uh, the running quarterback for Louisville, Lamar Jackson, Jackson. Yeah, he started giving uh, some did there give the him end. some problems. But other than that, just a very solid performance. Yeah, first play of the game, nice Carl Lawson uh, pressures Bonifin, who started for Louisville. He honestly threw up this floater that never had a chance. Trey Matthews picked it off in his first snap in an Auburn uniform. That really set the tone. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, like you said, that running quarterback really gave him some problems. But as long as they got Carl Lawson, who went out in the second half with what would it be, a hit pointer, hit flex, or something like that. He didn't come back the second half. But when he was in the backfield in the first half, they couldn't do anything. Him and Montrevious Adams, namely, they just feasted on the Louisville O-line tonight. And if those two are healthy, that Auburn D-line is going to get a tremendous amount of pressure on the quarterback every game. And that's something that the defense really struggled with last year. And, it, you know, when you can't get pressure with four, it really trickles back throughout the defense, and it hurts everybody. And the fact that Auburn, like you said, was able to get pressure with Lawson and with Adams and uh, Devereux Lawrence yep. and Dontavious Russell, some guys like that up front, uh, just really made a difference early in the game and, like you said, set the tone. Yep. Yeah, even a few young guys. Tim Irvin started at nickel. He did pretty well. Jeremiah Jensen, Carlton Davis, two freshman corners that got some decent playing time. Byron Coward even got in there a bit. But uh, he didn't get as much as people thought he might. But yeah, that's it for this week. Good win. Good way to start it off, particularly kickoff game. Next week we'll be at home against Jacksonville State. And that's it for a special post-game edition of This Week in Sports. See ya.